We're good. Now we can start with uh, what I had promised today because that's, uh, I, I don't know, Barbara, you want to add anything? Uh, we're good. Any surprises? Any news? No, unfortunately, I don't have any news. But like you mentioned, the exams are the 49, uh, 40, 40, 40, 59, 40, 60, and 40, 64. The DEDs are being reworked and um, the rubric, the evaluation grid has been reworked and the checklist has been reworked. We haven't received it yet. But then once the ministry does that, they're going to give it to us and then we'll have to revise the uh, the exams. So just to tell Angelo, I work for Grix, and what I do is I work with teams of teachers to produce end of year exams, evaluation situations, and also all the changes that come along with that. So um, that's my role. I'm not sure. And we work with the Cree School Board, both at the um, elementary and the uh, secondary level. And haven't really worked in the adult level because they simply use the exams that are, when, when they teach science, they use the exams that are produced by the centers here in Montreal. Mm -hmm. and, and we're super, super lucky that Barbara always attend and always she's she's our 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 she's our back because uh she she take like the feedback that gets sent to BIM is through Barbara and she's very efficient. Like she's not somebody who has to go and put in a pile and we wait three months. You know, she's actually very attentive and she really, really caters to to the adult uh, sector's needs. So we're very, very lucky to have Barbara because she's really, really on the top of things. So that's why one thing I have to give Barbara, like, you know, five stars if I could. <laughs> so thank you Michelin so much. Too. Five stars for Micheline. Thank you. For <laughs> thank We've you, worked Barbara. together a lot, Micheline and I, uh, just to tell you, Angelo, that's why we know each other well. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's it. And we will definitely, eventually, hopefully, we'll reach out to you whenever the occasion comes where if you would like to kind of contribute also, what if the occasion opens up. So we'll definitely, I think, uh, we'll... Uh, we will reach out if it is something within your uh, your interest eventually if the need rises we always look for uh, eager teachers to participate and we like to diversify also voices so the indigenous voice is really important to us too so like the english like the french like everybody else mm -hmm. but we, we like to diversify the team so at least everyone's uh, have their print on our exams right so, perfect so that being said, um, I will start with uh, my presentation. <laughs> uh, just to let you know, also before I I I, I share my screen with you, um, this is uh, these are three part presentation. The first one is actually I I actually invite you, Angelo, to look to view the first uh, the first presentation, which talks about the DED and the program. So it gives yeah. you a more, an overview about the DED and program. Today we're going to talk about how to make um, how to make um, rubrics for uh, for the students student friendly rubrics because when you give rubrics to 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 students that the on the first time they see it is in exams and half of the time they don't even know what they're being evaluated on what uh -huh. is C one what is C two what is C one what is C two and sometimes as teachers ourselves sometimes we will look at this and say what does this mean right so this is why we're we're doing these three sessions. And the third session, it's actually a simulation of exam correction, where we get people from all over the place virtually, and it's going to be in a hybrid setup, where we actually give, we're going to, we're going to pretend a pretest is an exam and have teachers use the rubrics to correct, to see, are we, do we all fall within, do we have the same understanding of, of these rubrics and the evaluation system or process, so we could be fair fair to to our students because uh the the, the skill here we're, that we're aiming for is that the students shouldn't be penalized regardless who correct everyone regardless like you could be taught by anyone but when it comes to correction any teacher could correct as within similar range hopefully within yeah, a very very minute yeah. yeah so hopefully the the, the the aspect of fairness it's across the province and this is why we're trying to work on this Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so let's move forward and I'll share my screen for the second part. Uh, so for the third part, that's what I was going to share with you. It's going to be by registration because we need a minimum of six teachers <laughs> to be able to, to kind of, uh, 
have this interaction and have this rich uh, this this rich exchange. So if I don't have the collaborative uh, aspect of it, if I, the collaborative aspect. Otherwise, it could be done uh, individually in a center. I could work with the teachers uh, within a center or with a teacher. But the minute we're talking about collective part, we need different views, different teachers. So that's why I think why I actually guess. asked a question to Patricia about that because. It seemed to me, if I recall correctly, it was listed as a 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. session uh, in terms of the third session. Yeah, that's right. Uh, for science, math, and English, if I recall correctly. Yes, on three different dates, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, because the whole idea is, is the minute we're going to start working with exams, first of all, exams, if it's ministerial or BIM, they're still exams, and it cannot be uh, shared virtually. So it has to be in presence, in a closed room, counted for. So that's why we said, okay, let's use this. Let's practice the process, but through a pretest, because a pretest at the end of the day, in case virtue if it's shared virtually or it's shared uh, uh, on the on 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 the network, it doesn't matter. It's the process that we're focusing on, not necessarily the exam itself, because it's yeah, the same. For, it should be for process. someone who's a hunter. It'd be like a bullet with no gunpowder in it. That's it. <laughs> well, if you want to look at it that way, yes, that's exactly what it is. So that being said, to uh, to uh, talk about today's uh, conversation, um, we decided to go through, uh, well, when I was looking over the exams and it was a bit kind of complicated because, again, uh, some of the rubrics are in the DEDs, some of the rubrics aren't in the DEDs, and I'm not going to take rubrics directly from exams. So the 4059 is one of the newest courses, and these rubrics happens to be in the DED, so they're public to everybody. So I left here a copy, a PDF copy, and you're going to see we have access to it. Um, and what do, why are we doing this again? If we take a look at the examination of the breakdown and the breakdown of the evaluation rubric, uh, we're looking at an assessment tool, a rubric set of criteria for evaluating performance or work completely in a course. So, of course, there is a set of standards like you just mentioned, Angelo, that we'd like to make sure that all of our students are able to get there. So we need these criteria to see, well, what would be considered a perfect uh, like uh, the, the student met perfectly what is required of them versus the degradation of it, right? So a rubric also communicate expectations of learning. So and provides a framework for the instructor to make decision about the students. So again, these are guidelines, these are standards that we'd like to kind of a common language that we all communicate together when it comes to um, assessment. Um, rubrics can be used throughout the learning as much as the end of it, right? So mm -hmm. rubric are both used in formative, the formative assessment, so means in the process with feedback and uh, as a feedback system or summative assessment, um, meaning uh, the evaluation of learning at the end of the course. Notice that these are terms, uh, formative, summative. At the end of the day, rubric is just a way of saying, where is the student? Did they get did they get what we need them to get and this is the way we measure it uh, in a standard format essentially it's just a tool to communicate between the student and the learner keeping making sure that we follow what they're supposed to be uh, what's the goal of them being to accomplish so when you're using the rubric with a student when a student gets familiar with a rubric early on they are more inclined to engage in their learning. So they know what the teacher is expecting of them, what they're being evaluated on. I haven't seen anybody registering at a university course, not knowing what they're gonna be evaluated on, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> Don't go in blindly say, oh, I trust you, tell me what I'm gonna be. And no, we all start with the form of information. This is what we're going to learn. And this is what you specifically you're going to be evaluated on. So the students in our in the adult uh, in the adult education world have a tendency to be completely absent from that process. So obviously they don't know what they, they don't know what they're being evaluated on, how they're being evaluated on. So therefore, they're one of the component. Obviously, this is not the main component, but one of the contribution of being less engaged. So. You know, I just follow the crowd, right? Instead of being in charge of my learning. 
Um, this engagement contribute also to higher order thinking. So we want them, we want to develop this kind of critical thinking analysis. And obviously, regardless of where they start, this is where we want them to be. So some, some of us take different ways to get there. Uh, but at least we have an end, like not an end, but like a, a, a way, a, a goal to reach. A conclusion. So, a conclusion, if you want, or a conclusion to a new beginning, if you want. Yes. <laughs> uh, so going over the rubrics with the students clarifies expectations. So when you talk to the students, say, look, we talked about this. What By the end, you're supposed to know how to do this, how to do this. If they're aware, so they have a goal, right? Um, so clarify expectation for assignment, for understanding of component of the assignment. So you're, they'll know that the teacher is planning has a plan in mind to get them where they need to get versus it's just randomly teaching whatever they're teaching randomly. Um, also, student target rubric makes for an inclusive teaching practice. Uh, not only do they provide transparency in grading, but they encourage full participation. That means what? When you do, you build a rubric with the students to their understanding of what they're being evaluated on, they become a participant, an active learner, in, their, in the process because they know what they're gonna be evaluated on. They're gonna know, let's say by the end of this semester, when you learn this math, you're gonna actually show me how you build, I don't know, uh, 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 a budget, right? So I'm gonna teach you how to get to learning a budget, or I'm gonna teach you how to be able to, I don't know, filter a water system, whatever it is. Um, again, in a, a, as a formative tool, rubric promotes communication, consistency, transparent, uh, transparency, um, so it reduces uh, for mental health also, like they reduce anxiety because they, they're very aware of what they're going to be evaluated on. Uh, identify strength, you know, through observable uh, descriptors. So when you say, well, you know, you demonstrated this for me doing this criteria, let's look, I'll show you how you did it. Or they have to show you. You tell me you know how to do it, great, show me. Show me, prove to me that you know how to do it. I need to see the steps. So I could tell the whoever is collecting those grades that yes, you can do this. And I could sign, I back you up on it. And also it's very good also the, this process for improvement through observable descriptors. So you're starting somewhere, you're not there yet. So there, it's a way, it, it's almost like a progression and you're, you, uh, you, you have an indicator, you have a starting point to where you want the students to be regardless where they're starting from. As a summative tools, uh, they provide a faster assessment, a more fair system and more objective system. So we have a goal, everybody corrects hopefully the same way you know, and the, the more we do it, the more we have that, you know, uh, that that fairness component that we, we all want our, for all our students, right? So that being said, let's move on. So uh, which, which brings us to what we're doing today. Uh, of course, all this famous Bloom taxonomy <laughs> that yes. we're all aiming for. <laughs> Obviously, we want our students, we're guiding our students to be more in the top three shelves versus the lower one. And not to say the lower ones are, are, are not, they're not good. They have their purpose, but they're all, like, everything has its purpose, you know? And to be able to do all of them, not just to do some and not the others, but to be able to get, to be able to fluctuate comfortably, flexibly between all of them. Uh, and again, just to go back, when we're talking about evaluation, we're mainly looking for action verbs. And if you're not familiar with those action verbs, and this is all aligned in the, during, it has to start from the learning part. So if I'm aiming this assignment to have a more evaluating tone, there is usually matching verbs that goes to in, induce this kind of intention. So by choosing the right action verb, you're aiming a different layer in that Bloom taxonomy. So by using these kind of verbs, you'll notice in exams, they're common use of verbs, more or less. This is the revised one. So again, there is more extensive Bloom taxonomy verbs, but this is just that I thought uh, would be useful to guide you through it. 
Now, we're going to go through, like we, we already been through the program. We talked about the competency and that there's modal, les modalités, and this is the manifestation. The manifestation is just the manifesting how these, these uh, competency are actually the, like shown. How are we actually picking them up uh, in, in the student's work? So that brings us to something like that, that you're very familiar with. When you take a look at an exam, you see at the end of these exams, you have these rubrics. So this is an example of a rubric that I, I, I kind of want to share just the first component with you. It's from the 4059. And notice over here, this is the practical component. The 40% is the practical component. And I selected uh, criteria, evaluation criteria 1.1 just to show you, uh, to show you, uh, to, to kind of think about it, reflect on it for a moment. So notice over here, you'll have the evaluation criteria that is uh, always on the left, if you want. And you have the scale, uh, the rating scale on top. And those terminology, notice it, they have changed. And I don't know if they're changing again with the new rubric. Are they? Oh, well, thank you, Barbara. We may have new words on top. <laughs> So just to let you know, it doesn't matter what they put on top, but as long as we're familiar that when we're talking about acceptable is mid row, advanced, meaning higher, you know, they were able to complete, like to achieve all, they hit all their targets versus minimal, they are kind of missed out on a lot of the competency that they need more work. They're not ready to move forward. So notice over here, everything within those boxes under the rating skills, they are just simply um, what we call descriptors, okay, that access the degree of achievement for each competency. So if I have a student that fall midway, he probably is on the acceptable side. And of course, notice here we have a qualitative and a quantitative because of course, when we're looking at math and science, we have to have a number, <laughs> which is sometimes is an issue, but uh, regardless, um, you know, uh, it's it's very descriptive, this kind of rubric. Now, if you want to kind of rework this kind of rubric with your students, uh, you take a, a strategy that I would recommend is take this rubric, go over the descriptors and identify the words that needs clarification. So that means I'll read all of them and I'll take maybe a red highlighter and I say, okay, which words I have an issue with or I don't understand or what does it mean? And I go ahead and highlight everything and once you get those words, then you go back and have this conversation. Okay, what would you like this word to be replaced with that will make more sense to you, right? So by building those, this is a beautiful exercise to do with students because then they have, they, 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 they put it in a language they can understand. And I'm gonna show you a couple of examples that I've done this exercise with, okay? So <clears throat> now if we go back, for a minute before this is an exercise that I want to do with you. If we go back to just do the evaluation criteria 1.1, and the 1.1 talks about an appropriate representation of a situation. And this is where I would like to have a conversation with you about what does representation mean? Because it's a very interesting word. And we can start off with just simply what does that word mean, right? So what does representation mean to you? Um, one of the ways I've used it is uh, actually drawing or illustrating. Okay. Drawing, illustrating. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else? Well, for me, I've learned to um, not associate the word representation in my mind with what I'm doing. <laughs> because that <laughs> in a rubric, it never seemed to work. Okay. <laughs> for me, I... I I read 1.1, but I, I use the descriptions more mm -hmm. to, to help me understand what it is they're looking for. Okay. But how you feel about what Angela just said about by being like having it as a graph, having it as a, um having it as as a drawing? I've seen it in um in in math. I've seen it, like I've seen representation, the word being used like that in math and also in like 4061, right? The circuit diagrams and things like that. 
but I also know sometimes they have a different meaning than that, which mm -hmm. seem to be here. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, other teachers that I actually, th this, this workshop has been done over like maybe it's the third or fourth time that I'm doing it. And I always collect <laughs> answers because I want to make, I would like to share other, other teachers answers with you. And you're, uh, some some people have answered the same way as Angela. When we're talking about representation, we could talk about graph, we could talk about highlighting, underlining, uh, drawing, making arrows around, any way that shows the students communicating for you that, okay, this is this is important. This is this is what I extract, this is what this means to me. And I know we're talking about more like uh, a bit of a of a fluor idea, but you're right, Jessica. We will get to define what representation more by the manifestation, and we're going to talk about those a little bit later. But I want to bring your attention to this rubric here. If you read the rubric, like Jessica, you said, okay, what is required? Well, if I take if I start off, let's say by the 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 middle one, acceptable, okay. So we can all agree that acceptable is like the borderline between passing and not passing. Is that something we could all agree on or not necessarily? Anyone could challenge. This is a conversation. There's no right or wrong. I'll say okay, okay to that. Okay. So let's say midpoint is what we call like, it's acceptable, right? So even if you look at the descriptor here, but it says, show a satisfy satisfactory understanding of the problem to be solved by identifying certain characteristic and the main scientific or technological principle to consider in coming up with the solution of the answer. But if you read thorough and advanced, have similar. And if you read partial and minimal, you all have similar definition. But what word in that description cause, personally causes me a big question mark? that I would like to kind of define with you. Would you guys, what word would be like you'll be stuck on when you see, when you read this? Okay, so I'm gonna challenge you with the word I got cut off, <laughs> cut off with. When I read this the first time, I was like, okay, this is great. But what does certain mean? Certain characteristics, certain, the word certain. Well, okay, is it one, is it two, is it three? Is it, what is it, okay? So this is where this conversation is starting to be a bit challenging because certain for me, it's a big question mark. You're saying it's too vague. It's too vague because the thing is certain, it can mean for you, well, if I ask you certain characteristics, well, what is a certain characteristic? What do you mean? Like to you, what does it mean certain? If a student write like two characters, is that enough? Is it not enough? Is it like... What does that mean for, for, for somebody who wants to be fair, whatever we define as it has to be the rule for everybody, but there is interpretation in the word certain. So, and this was a common point that was brought up in three, four workshop that we brought it. So what does certain define as me for me is one, because we had an example and the, the teachers were like, oh no, for me, if you give me this, it's enough for me. And the other teacher was like, no, absolutely not. It's missing this, this, this. And then there was a whole conversation about one word. So, so if the, we the, as the teacher, committee had a the committee had a, a to do about that, yeah. Well, it's 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 not even a committee, it's a bunch of teachers from different places. Mm -hmm. And they all had disagreement just on a word. So you could understand how. This process is so important to have people sit together and have these conversation because a common understanding of these terms or defining these terms, how far we'll go. So I know, I know we're looking at the time and this is, it's, it's a workshop that it's a lot longer than an hour, but I just want you to start thinking about this. When you read these descriptors, sometimes it's worth to do the exercise yourself. Like, what do you define? What is your expectation? Let's take a look at the checklist. Let's take a look at the exam and see, okay, what would I consider in my school board, in my centers, the way we're running things? Are we all, do we all agree on what does certain mean? What does a perfect answer look like? It has to be common. It has to start within your center before it starts to the province. And most of the time within the same center, you have teachers who have different definition for the same thing and an efficient team is a team that have an agreement on how they correct their exam. 
it doesn't matter who who you could have different teaching style but the person who corrects it does, shouldn't matter it should be anyone correcting and we all know if barbara michelin or jessica corrected this exam you're going to have a fair mark because they're all going to follow the same rules As and this if it is what were a checklist and and well <laughs> the checklist could be an option yeah. No, I mean, as if it were a checklist, something exactly. it's a yes or no, like that precise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we could talk about that. Think about it like that. But also, you know, we could have a whole conversation about professional judgment, too. You know, Absolutely. but that's that's another angle. We're not going to go there. But yes, but we have to have at least a common agreement on on what every term means. So this exercise is usually done. We'll give you usually time. I would like you to go over that and actually rewrite, like you say, what you need to do to be able to have an appropriate representation. So you as a teacher, what would be an appropriate answer in representing the situation? And you will write it down. And how will this be demonstrated by your student? This is an exercise that every teacher should do because when this is clear in your mind, this is what get transmitted to the students. So the students are able to kind of prepare to what you're being evaluating. But sometimes because we've been, we're experts of sub, a matter of subject, we jump through things thinking that they know or should know. And we realize that what we come to the exam and we check what they're required to do does not necessarily matches on how we taught it. The consistency is not there. The questioning is not there. And that's where the misalignments sometimes happen. So it's just, it's just to make sure that we know ourselves what ideally should be our 100% or our mid or our, you know, so we'll be able to teach it. So when we say, when we demonstrate, well, if I'm teaching my student, you have to read something and take extract the important information. There's many strategy to do that, but I'm looking for that. I want you to read something and take away the fluff and extract the important information. And that's what I want you to do. And how do I do that? Is by showing this strategy, this strategy, this strategy, this strategy. Now the student picks whatever strategy they want to be able to do it. But when you come to evaluation, they're gonna reevaluate what they're learning. So if the learning has to match with this. So this exercise should be kind of done ahead so uh -huh. Uh -huh. so that's this your, is where <laughs> i kind of skipped that's in your step. planning <laughs> that's in the planning so this is where i skipped a step here and i showed you something like this personally the way i would look at this is like i love can statement some people may tell you i hate can statement but i like it they're using them on um on uh what is it uh iep statements now too i can statements well, this is, to, to me, I find it a student, but this exercise should be done with a student saying, okay, well, now we're talking about representation. How, how would you say, okay, I can identify the scientific characteristic. I can connect the scientific elements. I can reformulate, you know? So this is, we're able to kind of work with the students to, to develop it. So this exercise should be, um, this is what I wanted to do today with you, but looking at the time, it's kind of a bit, and I want you to leave on time, <laughs> but this is something that we could actually, if this is a need with a bunch of teachers, we could sit together and take the time to do this. I think it's a wonderful exercise mm -hmm. and it has a lot of benefits, you know? Uh, it clarifies but the points, yes. It, I yes. can see the benefits. And clears the, the teacher in their mind, you know how they say evaluation drive teaching? Well, hopefully, you know, once that is clear in your mind, then you could kind of be creative and flexible and um, on how the teaching comes once the end result is clear. <laughs> yes. But again, we all think differently, we all plan differently, we all do things differently. That could be a good practice. If you don't know where to start, that could be another one. Now here, notice I'm showing you from the theory perspective, uh, another another rubric from the theory, and it's the same idea. You have on the theory, which is 60% for the same course, you have the 2.1 competency two that says appropriate interpretation of the issue. And notice over here, it has two points, has an A and a B. And notice if you read the descriptives here, also the descriptive here gives you a benchmark on where is the student able to um, able to to achieve minimally achieve 
master the competency and needs more work on it. With the same idea, the whole idea here is to, again, what you need to do, which is the competency, and now how will you demonstrate it? Again, you could take the posture of being in the student's shoes or have this conversation with the student and have this exercise done. Okay, how would I demonstrate this? And of course, this is, you should, well, you, not you should, it is given to you in the DED in the program under the manifestation of these competencies. So you could get inspired from there. Okay, so it's not randomly you figure it out. They give you all the tools you need to develop this, but you could put it in a language where the students is familiar with more student friendly language or actually do the exercise literally with the students. And I think this would be a more beneficial thing for, for both. Okay, I have five minutes. So I'm gonna <laughs> accelerate the process. Again, I went to the I can statement because again, I found in my classroom when I taught this, it was almost like a, a nice, uh, how would I say, a nice, a nice way for me to, to, to have a conversation with the students. Remember when you said, you did this exercise, this problem, this this word problem. You you weren't able to identify relevant issues. So okay, let's look at what strategy I could help you with or show you to be able to do it. But if this has to be practiced during the learning, so when you get to the exam, you're really evaluating if the students were able to master their competency of being able to interpret it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, again. So this is what brings us to, again, ideas. This is a generic table that I could recommend to you. And you notice I have more than one tool to help you out with. So this one here, a generic table for learner target rubric. So you could do this exercise with the students saying, what's the objective, which is whatever uh, evaluation criteria you're trying to, to aim, what you need to do, how you'll demonstrate it, and the mark allotment. And this could be done in assignments, in a formative setup, as much as a summative setup. So it's it's an exercise that's worth practicing by yourself, with a teacher, with a colleague, and with the students. Uh -huh. Now, this is an exercise that year, a few years ago I've done um, to help out, uh, it was in a, in, a, in, a, in a workshop. And you'll notice it's a template that I provided <laughs> to to uh, the teachers uh, that were there. And at the time, they like the questioning format. So as the teacher asking the student, did I identify? So let's say the student, did I identify all the information? So they were simulating that behavior to the students so they could model. So this is, again, this is guiding questions. This is This is something that we built together. Notice the same formula changed templates. The students, uh, the teachers who were more comfortable, they say, okay, I'm gonna do this exercise with my students. I'm gonna take a word, like a, a situation that we did together, and we're gonna go through it. Okay, you did this job, did, you were able to interpret and represent the situation well with the students. Now, what did you ask yourself? Go back in your mind to the students, say, what did you ask yourself that you were able to be able to do this part well? And give me an example. So the, the students, you know, later on when they move on, this is helps the student transfer those skills. So whenever they're stuck and they don't know what to do, they can go back and say, yeah, I remember I did this, 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 this. But this is, again, guided. And it's from the beginning of the learning. Another format is, again, having the question and giving it to the students as, as a self, uh, self assessment and self regulation where they're able to kind of you know the strong students that you may have in sec 4 or sec 5 that they know what they're they're doing mostly well but they need a little reminder and to go back and ask the teacher oh this one i kind of did not get well well i need to ask the teacher mm -hmm. and another format here is just literally getting rid of the grades getting rid of the again depending on the students you have in the front of you and just have questions and have on this side the teachers uh the teacher's response. So it's a communication, use it literally as a communication tool. So this would be more summative in that uh, sense that there's no number. Because uh, I, I feel that a number usually uh, is what we need to create for the uh, MEQ standards for sure. Yeah, but you see the whole idea with this, notice here, it's the same template, but mm -hmm. the student in the front of you is different. So their need and their understanding of this 
could vary. But just to show you the flexibility, it could take many forms. And okay. that format, it, they're all, they all achieve the same goal. But notice the flexibility on the learner, right? I mean, I may be a student who's very anxious. I don't want to know about grades. I don't want to know about details. I, I, I just want a checklist. So I might give a student this. I have the student who is very strong. I don't need you, teacher. I don't need nothing. I just need what I need to do. I might need something more like short and sweet that I'm going to put at the beginning of my book and I always refer to. I might need, I might be somebody who's literally really, really weak and I need to go step by step and I need the teacher to guide me in every single step. So this is a process that I would actually do, uh, actually do with the students every time he was able to conquer something and to do well so I could help them figure it out on their own. So you see the level, uh, the degree, the degree of guidance, but it's the same, the same template. Yes. So, so this is, is on knowing your student, on knowing your student and their needs. So the first step personally is you connect with the students, you get to know them a little bit, but this should be part of the conversation from day one. The rubric and and ideally could be a beautiful exercise at the beginning of just simply what like exactly what we had this conversation together it's like okay you read this what does it mean what does what are you stuck on where where you know or after a first work could be like making um like doing a recipe let's say an egg an omelet right everybody knows how to do an omelet it has nothing to do with science it's just something regular <laughs> that everybody can do and ask them to write, let's say, a, a lab report on it. Okay, I need this material, two eggs, uh, oil, whatever it is, the procedure. I cracked an egg, I did this and I did that. And the, the, the discussion, while it was good, but it was missing salt, I don't know, the conclusion, I was able to do my omelet, whatever it is. So you go through this with that simple lab and say, okay, were you able to identify gather, organize your information? You could create a little scenario. I don't know, John wants... Uh, to have a spinach omelet, I don't know, I'm <laughs> just being like, you know, and go through something that is non-threatening in terms of content to go through the process and say, okay, am I able to do this? Am I able to do this? Am I able to do this? And get them to see how it's used on something very simple so they can understand how to self-evaluate and then keep bringing back template over and over and over and notice that it's aligned with the summative format. Uh -huh. So again, these are ideas to help the student better succeed. So we want them to be aware, to be part of the formula instead of just telling them what to do all the time. And when, you know, you notice when you start saying to your students what to do all the time, what ends up happening, they sit back and they expect you to do everything for them. But we want them to be independent, self-regulated, you know, students. So we have to let them suffer a little bit by guiding them so they can grow up a little bit in that way. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a very accelerated presentation um, of what it is. So thank you for coming. Sorry, I kept you two minutes extra. <laughs> but please, you don't have any is... complaint from me. <laughs> thank you. So that's it. So thank you all for coming. I really appreciate you all coming. If you are interested in doing that third part, please register. Have a beautiful end of day and we'll definitely keep in touch. And uh, thanks again. And hopefully we'll have part three soon. Yes.